I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome to another installment in my Celebrating Disney series where I review and celebrate all things Disney, animated or live action under the main Disney banner. It's crazy because this week I'm actually will also be tackling the last movie in my Sam Raimi director series where I've been reviewing Sam Raimi's complete filmography. It just so happens that the last film that Sam Raimi has directed to date is a Disney film, so I figured I'll combine the two series together for this video. So in today's review, I'll be tackling the 2013 fantasy effort, Oz the Great and Powerful. Great and Powerful was released in 2013, directed by Sam Raimi. Of course, if you hadn't been following the Sam Raimi reviews, Sam Raimi is best known for directing films such as the Evil Dead trilogy and also the original Spider-Man trilogy starring Tobey Maguire. He's also directed prominent films such as Dark Man, Drag Me to Hill, the Western from 1995, The Wicked and the Dead, and the 2000 horror film The Gift, just to name a few. Sam Raimi directing a Disney film is quite insane, actually, considering his start was horror cinema, but Sam Raimi was attached to direct Oz the Great and Powerful, an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, kind of a spiritual prequel of sorts, if you will to the 1939 classic, The Wizard of Oz. The reason I say spiritual prequel, but Disney wasn't allowed to say this was a legit prequel to The Wizard of Oz because of copyright reasons, because Disney does not own The Wizard of Oz. And I'm sure Warner Brothers, who currently owns The Wizard of Oz, is not gonna give away one of their prized possessions to the media empire known as Disney. I don't see that happening anytime soon. But, there's a lot of callbacks, there's a lot of references and connections still to The Wizard of Oz, which is why a lot of people call it a spiritual prequel. Oz the Great and Powerful was greenlit by Disney after the runaway success of the live action version of Alice in Wonderland, and Disney expected this film to make just as much money as Alice in Wonderland, which made over a billion dollars worldwide. Uh, while Oz the Great and Powerful was considered a financial success, it did not make near as much money as Alice in Wonderland. I think it only made half that. So it was considered a disappointment in Disney standards. And that's probably why you haven't gotten an Oz franchise at this point. The film also had mixed reviews from critics, much like the Alice in Wonderland remake. Some critics didn't care for it, some liked it enough. There are fans of Oz the Great and Powerful, and there's people who believe that Oz the Great and Powerful ranks among the absolute worst of Sam Raimi. So where do I fall in this category? Do I enjoy this film, or do I hate it being a Sam Raimi film? Let's find out together. So Oz the Great and Powerful follows Oscar Diggs, a small-time circus magician with dubious ethics. When Diggs is hurled away to the vibrant land of Oz, he thinks he's hit the jackpot until he meets three witches, some of whom aren't convinced that he is the great wizard everyone's expecting. Reluctantly drawn into epic problems facing Oz and its inhabitants, Oscar must find out who is good and evil before it's too late. Putting his magical arts to use through illusion, ingenuity, and even some wizardry, Oscar transforms into the great wizard and a better man as well. And this movie stars James Franco, Mila Kunis, Rachel Weiss, Michelle Williams, Zach Braff, Bill Cobbs, Joey King, and Tony Cox. 
So I did see Oz the Great and Powerful when it came out in theaters back in 2013. I saw it with my mom and I saw it with my sister. We all saw it on the big screen. Uh, I saw The Wizard of Oz around the same time as well. I've always been a fan of The Wizard of Oz, so it was cool seeing a new adaptation on the big screen and this being kind of like the backstory of how your average Joe ended up becoming the Wizard of Oz. Uh, it's kind of fun seeing that backstory of how this character got there. And I think when I first saw it, I liked it, but I was a little disappointed by it. I think that I enjoy like the visual artistry of the film, but like I did have, there were a few cracks in it narratively that did disappoint me. However, re-watching the film over time, I've grown to appreciate Oz the Great and Powerful even more. I will say though, this movie does lack the heart that made The Wizard of Oz a timeless classic. And I think what hurts it is, Oscar is not as relatable of a character as Dorothy. Dorothy's journey in The Wizard of Oz is definitely a lot more timeless. She definitely has this relatability to her character to where you feel for her as she's in this strange land and her journey pretty much is simply to get back home. That's something anybody can relate to if they're in that predicament and that's what makes The Wizard of Oz an enduring classic. Oz the Great and Powerful on the other hand, her main story is a con man, a scoundrel who lies and cheats his way to where he is and He's still a trickster even though he has a good heart. And that's not near as relatable. And I can see why some were turned off by that. I think especially in Disney standards. However, I've grown to like the movie the more I rewatch it. If you remove The Wizard of Oz and forget about it when watching Oz the Great and Powerful and watch this film on its own merits, it's actually not a bad film. I was disappointed at first in the casting of James Franco as Oscar, especially considering some of the actors he beat out for the role because Robert Downey Jr. was almost cast in the role and also Johnny Depp were actors that were in consideration for this role. James Franco ended up beating him out because the other two had scheduling conflicts. And I think at the time, I thought either one of those actors would have been the better choice. I can see a more quirky performance if it was Johnny Depp playing Oscar. A more charismatic version of the character for Robert Downey Jr. But I still enjoyed James Franco's performance. The more I've watched it, the more I've grown to like James Franco. He still pulls off this charm to it. He can come off as a little sleazy at times because of the shadiness of the character, but he still pulls off the role very well, and you grow to like him the more the movie goes on. And he still gives a solid performance, even if yeah, there could have been better actors in the role. He still holds his own and still gives a good performance. In fact, the cast in this movie does work all around. Uh, I do enjoy Rachel Weisz who ends up playing one of the Wicked Witches. I think she, of the three actors playing the witches, she's the one who revels in her character the most. And I enjoy how over the top she gets the more the movie goes on. Uh, some of the supporting actors are, are pretty good in here. Zach Braff plays this monkey that becomes an assistant to Oscar. And I thought he was pretty funny throughout. Which is saying something because the last time he voiced a Disney character, he was Chicken Little. No! Yeah, the less said about Chicken Little, the better. But he redeems himself in this movie. One of the standouts is actually Joey King, who ends up playing a China girl. There's a world in Oz of these China doll type characters, and she, this character ends up teaming up with Oscar as well. The visual effects for this character is so remarkable. Like the CGI used to create this character is incredible. And his character moves around so smoothly and it's never a distraction. It's one of the best realized visual CGI characters I think in a recent film that not too many people talk about. I enjoy this character. She's actually a scene stealer throughout. 
We also got Bill Cobbs, a very funny character actor I've enjoyed over the years. He plays a tinker type character. And then we got Michelle Williams who plays Glenda the Good Witch. And I'd say her take of the character is a little bland and generic, but she's playing the Good Witch. She's nice and all and she plays the character very well. It's not a great performance by any means, but she does have solid chemistry with the rest of the actors and she does a fair enough job in the role. Now, on the surface, this could have been a bland and generic and forgettable fantasy film because the central premise of Oz the Great and Powerful is a man traveling to a strange world is mistaken for the chosen one and ends up being caught in this adventure to try to fulfill a prophecy. The, the kind of tired tropes, right? And we have a prophecy and a chosen one and try to maintain the balance between good and evil, restore peace in the world. Pretty tired tropes at this point, I'd say. Uh, Disney also used similar tropes with the recent Alice in Wonderland movie. And the tropes did not work in Alice in Wonderland. But I think they actually work in the context of Oz the Great and Powerful. And it could have been tired in Oz as well. But unlike Alice in Wonderland, where I felt like putting those fantasy tropes was a detriment to that film because Alice in Wonderland was supposed to be like wild and nonsensical and not have any rules. Oz the Great and Powerful. The world of Oz was always meant to be kind of a fight between good versus evil. That's what, even what the Wizard of Oz stories are known for. So I actually don't mind having the traditional good versus evil in a world like this. It actually fits with the world building of the land of Oz. And it just adds all of the charm and wonder of a world like this. And I think what helps make Oz the Great and Powerful the enjoyable watch it is, is Sam Raimi's direction. It seems like an odd choice for Sam Raimi to helm this movie because of his background in horror films and also comic book films, but he still does a great job directing this film. In fact, some of the callbacks to The Wizard of Oz and kind of the tributes it has to that classic film is very warranted. Much like The Wizard of Oz, the film opens in black and white and in Kansas, even the beginning scenes of Oz are shot in the 4x3 box ratio and then when Oscar travels into Oz the movie transitions from 4x3 to widescreen and from black and white to glorious color much like when Dorothy arrives on Oz except Wizard of Oz was not widescreen. Another thing I liked uh, callback was in the Kansas scenes you have actors in some of the cast in the beginning of the film play characters that knew Oscar, like Zach Braff is in the opening scenes as a human, Michelle Williams is kind of a love interest, and Joey King as a kid watching uh, one of Oscar's failed shows. And they end up playing prominent roles in Oz who help reshape the character. And I thought that was a cool thing as well, kind of like what the Wizard of Oz did with some of the actors playing characters in Kansas who also play prominent characters in Oz. I thought that was a cool thing as well. Also, Sam Raimi's direction, it's very vibrant. It's very colorful. I think having Sam Raimi direct the film, I think was helped make this film quite energetic throughout. The film is very much entertaining and its execution and when you got a director like Sam Raimi and is still able to sneak in horror elements even under the Disney umbrella that's pretty awesome like when Mila Kunis ends up turning into the iconic Wicked Witch of the West there's a little bit of horror elements in that that dug there's even a jump scare in this film with the notorious flying monkeys and very a lot creepier than in the original film, I must say. So uh, you gotta give Sam Raimi props for that, at least. And he stuck in a Bruce Campbell cameo, and it's a really funny Bruce Campbell cameo. It's actually, might be one of my favorite Bruce Campbell cameos in a Sam Raimi film alongside the original Spider-Man. 
All in all, this is a very entertaining film. I think this film is visually vibrant throughout. I love how colorful the world of Oz is and I enjoyed the overall journey. I did enjoy Oscar's journey from being a very unlikable scoundrel to a less unlikable scoundrel with a good heart. All around, there's some entertaining aspects to it, but I do have some negatives. One, I do think being a prequel film, it does kind of fall into the prequel trappings of being pretty predictable on where things end up, especially if you've seen The Wizard of Oz, you pretty much know where all these characters end up. Not a detriment to this movie, it, I mean it kind of is, but some of the stakes feel kind of gone when you actually put two and two together while it does work as a standalone film, of course. But I think a big issue I have with Oz the Great and Powerful, besides from it lacking the heart of the Wizard of Oz, is Mila Kunis as the Wicked Witch of the West was a pretty big miscast, in my opinion. I don't have anything against Mila Kunis. She is a good actress, and I've seen her give good performances. But I don't think she works as the Wicked Witch of the West. her My issue with the casting reminds me a little bit of Topher Grace's Venom. Much like Topher Grace, Mila Kunis is actually really good as Theodora, the character she was before becoming the Wicked Witch. Uh, I thought her, I thought she was actually really good as Theodora and I actually bought into the backstory of how she ends up being betrayed by Oscar because of Oscar's, you know, sleaziness and she ends up being manipulated and ends up becoming an evil wicked witch so i thought i bought into the backstory but once she dons that green makeup and becomes the wicked witch of the west ah it just didn't work i'm just kind of cringing throughout mila kunis trying to sound evil and yeah i just didn't really buy it and her performance was kind of cringe throughout. It just didn't really work, especially compared to how iconic Margaret Hamilton was in the 1939 classic. And to hear her trying to spout out some of the similar dialogue, like Pretty One and stuff like that, ugh, it just didn't really work. I wish we had a better actress play a character like the Wicked Witch and can fulfill that gravitas, unlike Mila Kunis, who uh, just didn't really suit the role for me. But overall, even with my issues, I still highly enjoy Oz the Great and Powerful. I think this would have been a more bland and forgettable movie if it wasn't for Sam Raimi's direction. With Sam Raimi behind this film, I think this film has energy to it. It has vibrance to it, especially through its visuals, especially through its storytelling, even with the tropes. I think Sam Raimi pulls it off and you get an entertaining good versus evil story with a remarkable cast put into it. It doesn't hold a candle to The Wizard of Oz or even Disney's other Oz film they made in the 80s, Return to Oz. But it's still a good film on its own merits and I still enjoy it as kind of a prequel to The Wizard of Oz. It does work with that Sam Raimi flair to it. So at the end of the day, I'm actually going to give Oz the Great and Powerful a 4 out of 5 stars and on the 100 point scale it's getting a 79 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Oz the Great and Powerful where I've officially finished my Sam Raimi director series. I've reviewed his complete filmography from his directing debut all the way to his most recent film being Oz the Great and Powerful. Kind of a shame he hadn't directed any more films at this point he could have directed a couple more films up to now but he's been a prominent producer in more recent years helping produce horror films such as the evil dead remake and don't breathe and crawl to name a few but he is returning to directing he is directing an mcu film in the near future with doctor strange in the multiverse of madness which i am super excited to see that one because of sam raimi's involvement this is also part of my Celebrating Disney series where I review and celebrate all things Disney, animated or live action, regardless of quality, under the main Disney banner. If you're a Sam Raimi fan or if you're a hardcore Disney fan, I'll leave the links in the description below for playlists where you can catch up 
on all the reviews I've done in either series, whether you're a Sam Raimi fan or you're a Disney fan, definitely check the links in the description below where you can catch up on my past videos and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future videos in this series. Expect a Sam Raimi ranking coming to my channel very, very soon since I'm done with reviewing Sam Raimi's filmography. Be on the lookout when I start a new director series where I'll be diving into the filmography of David Fincher. So definitely look forward to some David Fincher reviews coming to the channel very, very soon. If you're new to my Celebrating Disney series, each week I review and celebrate all things Disney and I alternate between animated reviews and live action reviews. My animated reviews are done in chronological order through their between their theatrical animated classics to their directed video sequels along with the films of Pixar. While my live action reviews are freestyle and are prone to request if there's any live action Disney films or franchises you'd like me to tackle in the near future, definitely share your requests down in the comments down below. I definitely appreciate some feedback and I'll figure out when to integrate them in future installments and in celebrating Disney. Join me next week on Celebrating Disney where I'll be taking a look at the very first Pixar film. This will be an exciting one to talk about. I'll be talking about, of course, Toy Story, a revolutionary breakthrough in the art of animation. I can't wait to talk about Toy Story on my Celebrating Disney series and be on the lookout for that review coming next week. But if you've seen Oz the Great and Powerful, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!